There are some things that we find that the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad allow that were forbidden to people who came before. And there are some things that are forbidden in the Quran that were allowed to the people who came before. Why? Because although the message of the prophets is the same, their message being submission to God, some of the details of how the human beings should do that have changed over time. Let us think about that, why that might be. One of the reasons we could give is that humanity as a whole has gone through various stages, rather like we as individual human beings go through various stages. When we were born, we were in a certain state and we needed certain things. We need, well, many of us, of course, we, you know, we put nappies on our babies and the children are breastfed. The food that they are given is not the same as the food that the adult is given. The clothes that they wear is not the same as the clothes that we wear as an adult. And it's the same thing with humanity in general. Humanity was young. There were certain guidelines, certain simple guidelines and rules that were needed. Humanity and the interaction between human beings in general was a much more simple affair. And therefore the guidance that we needed was much more basic. But as human beings changed and as humanity itself grew and as the world changed, then individual communities, they needed specific guidance for those specific times and for those specific places. But about 1,400 years ago, when the Prophet Muhammad was born, the world had reached its final stage. Humanity had entered into a final era. And that it was time for a final message, a message that was not only for a particular place and for a particular time, but a message that was suitable and a sharia and a detailed guidance that was suitable and is suitable for humanity all the way up until the day of judgment. And that was the guidance that has been revealed by Allah in the Quran and has been detailed in the practice of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. So this is the Sharia. The Sharia really is composed of the actual details of the laws through which and by which the human being should live their life. And so in reality, the whole of Islam is included in the Sharia. The Sharia is really the practical side of how we should live our life in a way that is in submission to Allah. So the Sharia teaches us our belief in Allah, what we should believe about God, the things that we should say about God and attribute to God, and the things that we should not attribute to Allah and that we should not say about Allah. The Sharia details our belief in the angels, in the books that God has revealed throughout the ages, and the messengers and the prophets whom Allah has sent. The Sharia details for us the events that are going to happen before the Day of Judgment, the life in the grave, the Day of Judgment itself, and the paradise and the hellfire. The Sharia details for us our belief in Qadr wal Qadar, which means the measurement and the decree, and that is the decree of God. The Sharia details for us the events that are going to happen before the Day of Judgment, the life in the grave, the Day of Judgment itself, and the paradise and the hellfire. The Sharia details for us our belief are number one, the Shahada or the testimony of faith. 
that is to testify and bear witness that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of Allah. The second is the five obligatory ritual prayers that every Muslim has to pray five times every day within certain time frames, within a certain time period. So these are the five daily prayers. How do we perform those prayers? What are the conditions that make the prayer valid or invalid? Included in that is the preparation for the prayer in terms of ritual cleanliness, the wudu or the ablutions have, that a Muslim has to make in order to prepare themselves to say that prayer. What are the times? What is the beginning time of the prayer? And what is the end time of the prayer? What movements should we make? What things are we allowed and not allowed to do and say within the prayer itself? All of these things are detailed in the Sharia. And so with the zakat, that is the obligatory amount of money that every Muslim has to give from the excess wealth annually to certain categories of people. So for example, the Sharia details who are those categories of people? Who are the ones who are deserving recipients of the zakah, of this charity? From what money or from what wealth should zakah be given? And so on and so forth. All of this is detailed in the Sharia. Also the fasting month of Ramadan, where Muslims abstain from eating and drinking and from intimate relations between the husband and the wife from dawn until sunset. What are the things that break the fast? What are the obligatory aspects of the fast? And so on and so forth. All of these things are detailed in the Sharia. And then of course the Hajj or the pilgrimage to Mecca with all its rituals and all its aspects that need to be performed are again detailed in the Sharia. So these are the famous five pillars of Islam. But there are also many other acts of worship that a Muslim performs. For example, supplication or dua or asking God for things. This has certain manners, certain etiquettes, certain things that are allowed and certain things also that are prohibited. Also sacrifice, the issue of the animals that we are permitted to eat and the animals that we are prohibited to eat. What sort of food is permitted to us and what sort of food is prohibited? And the same with drinks. And also the whole issue of financial transactions. What sort of transactions are allowed and what sort of transactions are prohibited? For example, one of the things that is strongly condemned in the teaching of the Quran and by in, in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad is something called riba, which is often translated as interest. But in fact, riba is more comprehensive merely than what we are used to as the term interest. But this is again a type of transaction, a type of dealings between people that is strictly prohibited in Islam. All of these things are detailed in the Sharia. So we find that the Sharia is a comprehensive and complete way of life that has guidance for all aspects of the human being. It not only teaches us how we live our life in a way that is pleasing to God in terms of the actual personal and collective acts of worship that we have described, but also matters of interaction between the human being, between the husband and the wife, between the ruler and the ruled, between the teacher and the taught. All of these things are taught to us and detailed to us in the Sharia. And it may come as a surprise to even some Muslims that Islam has an economic system. The Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad detail a system of economic activity by which and through which we should conduct our economic affairs concerning trade and so on and so forth. The Quran also details laws by which rulers should govern and judges should judge.
in fact it is considered to be an essential aspect of God's unity and divinity one of the essential aspects of God's oneness is that God is a sharri which means in reality that Allah Allah God the creator is the law maker it is the unique and special attribute of God that God and God alone has the right and the knowledge to determine for human beings what is right and what is wrong what is good and what is evil what is lawful and what is unlawful and if any human being or collection of human beings claims that they have the right or the knowledge to legislate in opposition to what God has legislated then in fact they have claimed for themselves divinity they've claimed for themselves to be equal with Allah and of course no one nothing can be equal to Allah included in the Sharia therefore is a legal system laws through which and by which we govern our interpersonal relationships like marriage and divorce for example and another matter that is covered under the Sharia that is part and parcel of the Islamic way of life and again it's something that even many Muslims are not familiar with these days is that Islam also has a political system there is a system of how the Muslims should rule each other and how they should be ruled that is detailed and that is given in the Quran is often referred to as the Khalifa system or the idea or the concept that the Muslims should have all of the Muslims the whole Muslim nation should have a single ruler who is implementing and judging people according to the guidance that is contained within the Quran and that was detailed in the practical life example of Prophet Muhammad may God's peace and blessings be upon him which we call the Sunnah and of course Muslims believe that the Sharia is the truly just way of life through which and by which the human beings should conduct their affairs because the reality of the human being is that whenever we make laws whenever we make rulings and make judgments it's almost inevitable it is inevitable that those rulings and those laws and those judgments will be influenced by our own prejudices for example if I belong to a particular section of society a rich section of society or the merchant class or the priestly class or whatever it may be then inevitably I will make laws and I will make judgments that favor my outlook that favor my caste that favor my group that favor my sect it's the same even if the poor people have control then they will make laws and that they will make rulings that influence and that benefit their situation this is almost inevitably what happens in human affairs and so the reality is that our politicians and our judges and our rulers in many different ways they need us they need our support they need our votes they need our help they need our money but Allah is not in need of anything Allah doesn't need us to worship him Allah doesn't need us to follow his laws and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned the Creator Allah is concerned only about one thing and that is our benefit and therefore unlike the laws of human beings and unlike the man-made laws that are inevitably influenced by our prejudices our ignorance our particular state of scientific knowledge at any given time the Sharia of Allah is perfect it is from the perfect wisdom and guidance of the all-knowing creator of the heavens and the earth that is not influenced or directed or misdirected by human prejudice and human misunderstanding so this is why the Sharia we believe is ultimately the truly just way of life it is truly the just system it is truly the just way through which and by which human beings can conduct their affairs because Allah is the best knower of our needs 
Allah is the best knower of our requirements. Allah knows us better than we even know ourselves. And therefore there is a great logic in the understanding that we should submit ourselves and we should follow and that we should guide ourselves and rule ourselves according to what Allah the Creator has revealed. And that is why the Quran warns that those people who do not rule by that which God has revealed, it is as if they have disbelieved in God. It's if, as if they have rejected God and they have fallen by doing that into a great wrongdoing and a great misguidance. Indeed, one of the things the Quran criticizes the Jews and the Christians for is that they had taken their priests and their rabbis and made them gods besides Allah. When the Prophet Muhammad recited this particular verse of the Quran, there was one of his companions who used to be a Christian, and he said, O oh, Messenger of God, we didn't used to worship them, we didn't used to worship our priests and rabbis. The Prophet Muhammad said, But didn't they make lawful for you the things that God made unlawful? And didn't they make unlawful for you the things that God made lawful? And you accepted that? When the companion heard those words, he said, Yes, we used to do that. Then the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, said, That was your worship of them. In other words, when you made them equals in legislation, when you allowed them to change the laws that Allah had revealed, when you permitted them to allow for you the things that God had forbidden and forbidden for you the things that God had allowed. When you did that, then you made them, these priests and rabbis, equals with Allah. This, of course, is also a historical and severe warning to the Muslims also and a reminder that every Muslim is obliged to judge themselves and their families and each other and their own affairs by the guidance and the revelation that is contained in the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. In fact, Allah warns us and Allah swears, no, by your Lord, they can have no faith. They can have no true faith until they make you, Muhammad, a judge in all disputes between them and find no resistance in their heart against your decision and submit to it with the fullest submission. And this clearly shows that every Muslim is required to make the sunnah, the way and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, who explained the verses of the Quran and lived them in his life, we have to go back in all our affairs, whenever we have a disagreement, whenever we have a disputation, if we are Muslim, and we are people who believe in God and the last day, we would go back to what the Prophet Muhammad has said and we will make that a judge between us. And when we have found what Islam teaches, what the Quran teaches, what the Prophet Muhammad says, we will be happy with it and we will follow it and we will submit to it. So to conclude and to recap, the Sharia is the way that leads to God's pleasure. It is through obedience to the commands of Allah, by following the laws, the rules, the guidance that God has given us in the Qur'an and in the life example of Prophet Muhammad, by following that, that is the means through which and by which we draw closer to Allah. And this is the meaning of the Sharia. It is an all-encompassing term that covers everything in the religion of Islam, through which and by which we seek the pleasure of God and aim for God's paradise, and also all of that through which we avoid the anger of Allah and avoid Allah's punishment. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.